try Faces numb Locked up and spun out in my room Oh my own, here we go What's good? Beautiful people, welcome back to a new video. Not in the gym right now, but we're getting inked up. I already got a couple pieces. So we finished this one, the CU Space Cowboy. Back here, can you see it? Oh yeah, yeah. So we got the Gengar going, we still gotta fill it up. Yeah. That's what it's gonna look like? Yeah. Oh yeah! That's and I also got nasty. Juggernaug. Yup. I need to play custom zombies on the gaming channel. But we're gonna finish this tattoo. Shout out Jordan. Jordo Tattoos on, what, Instagram? If you want to get inked up in Utah, hit your boy up. Wait, so are you getting a tattoo? I might be getting something. <laughs> yeah. He's like peer pressuring Jordan into getting... I know, every no, time. Pressure. They don't be pressured. No, there's some peer pressure too. No, 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 no. <laughs> Probably <laughs> like his most consistent client though. Slap. <laughs> yeah. done like my whole arm basically. Yeah. Just nine months though. Nine Full months. Full tour. New one is it's all blurry as shit. We got like yeah, the kill all... shot and then nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. That's the way you All want. my spiritual shit, you know? I normally plan these bitches like day of with Jordan. We just go in the sketchbook and kind of look through inspiration and push it together. I don't have like some crazy deep ass thought behind every piece. I'll probably <coughs> get some of those down the road where I like like really put some thought into it, but I just like to get shit that looks cool, frankly. Have you shown yours on the channel? Yours? I don't know, I have, have all kinds of I shit. I have quite a bit. It's that, like, that, this is so sick. You have to show that. Yeah, that is that, nasty. The intricate detail, bro, look at the jeans, bro. You can tell those are Wrangler. This is so detailed, holy shit. I don't know how y'all do it either. For seven hours, bro. I don't lift for seven hours. <laughs> or game for seven hours. My streams are like two hours long. <laughs> You're like, do you want to take a pee break? Because we got six more hours, dog. <laughs> like, that's what you say. Like, I'm like the one of the most ADHD people yeah. ever, too. It's just so like, my like, ADHD people has that one thing that clicks. Like, mine's editing, right, and, like, yours right, is actually, right. Like, Once you find, like, that thing. Then you yeah. can just walk it forever. Where you yeah. got all that yeah. extra energy, where you can put all that shit into it. I slept, like, three hours a night in high school. Because I needed to go to the gym, and I thought that sleep was for the week. Nice. I didn't know that. <laughs> Drew, I'm gonna send you the Joe Rogan podcast with what's his name, Matthew Walker, the sleep dude. I'm on two four hour nights right now. You're shaking, look at you. The camera's shaking, bro. I kind of fell out of football, like after I quit playing, really. I was super obsessed with football, equally as much so as I was with bodybuilding. I played quarterback, so I would study all the fundamentals of throwing, like all the mechanics, just like looking up stuff that I couldn't go to, like all the bullshit camps that were like 2K a day and shit. I would just look up YouTube videos and like practice. It was uh, David Lade's video. I remember I was on Connor's couch on a Sunday night and I saw David's video, his transformation video that fucking, I think everyone other month. Yeah, yeah, my angel. I remember he was taking a shit while I was watching it. He came out and I was like, Connor, I'm fucking signing up to the gym tomorrow. I thought I was just a skinny fuck for life. And then I saw this skinny dude, like get not so skinny. I kind of just needed that confirmation. You had to have come across something that was like, bro, I got to do this videography shit, right? Yeah, no, it's literally the, I know the video. It's uh, Salt by Ollie Ritchie. The, the video? video? Yeah. And then it was uh, Talk, Kamihagi, and Sneaking into EDC. Those two videos. I'm gonna quit and start filming for Drew. <laughs> <laughs> After I watch this shit. Uh, it's literally just like that, yeah, it's that one thing for everybody. It's yeah. Like, I remember Jordan trying so many different things. Being like, I wanted to be a barber. Maybe I need to be a doctor. Maybe I want to do this. He was in football too. We were both playing football. I was better at drawing than Jordan was at some point. And he was like, I want to be a tattoo artist. And I was like, word. Did you like see a tattoo? Or I was drunk at a party and ran into Landon. And oh, like you said, I just you. try everything. I'm a firm believer. That's how you find out what you love. And yeah, tattooing became a home for me through that. Just fell in love with it. I have a small background in art, but just kind of came back to it years later and it was like the most therapeutic thing for me to do. I found myself just staying at home drawing That's fun. instead it's, of going out partying and yeah. shit, yeah. Have the comparison of working the bullshit jobs, bro. Changing the oil and the fucking F-150s, the Terraflex warehouse job, random, the Walmart, the 
flipping patties at five guys. And then I picked up a dumbbell and thought I would try to make something out of it. Same with the gaming. I was watching Markiplier, Corey, while I was eating cereal. We were watching them together and laughing. Never in a million fucking years did I think any souls would be watching me fucking playing video games while they're eating cereal like I was. You don't know until you try, for real, for real. Same with videography, mm -hmm. same with the gym. Find out what your genetic potential is with going to the gym. No, literally, bro. If we literally. can do it, anybody <laughs> can fucking do it. Uh, <laughs> let's run this shit. See you good? Yeah. That's so clean. Boom, juggernaut. See you, space cowboy. Cha-ching! I do got more tattoos to come, though. We're gonna make sure to get them on the vlogs, too, because I want to document all the tattoos. All right, what's goody? This is fast-forwarded a couple days. I got tattoo Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so today is Tuesday, which means it's leg day. Ladies and gentlemen, I switched up some movements. The main attack objective for my leg day today is hamstring curls. Then I got leg press. Then I got Smith machine squats. Then we got some calves and abs also. But the philosophy behind hitting hamstring curls first you could do a good amount of hamstring curls. It ain't gonna take away from your future movements, especially if they're quad dominant like my movements. So you can go ham on them in the beginning when they're fresh because later on you're gonna see I'm not gonna be able to form a lot of sentences after Smith machine squats. It's good to do that before that happens, you feel me? I would get in the seated hamstring after Smith machine squats and be like, I just don't wanna be here. Then I still have to do calves too and it would just be bad. So systemic fatigue, that's what it's called. You wanna take that into account. So we put hamstrings first. I already tried this leg day once. It felt great. It felt great on my leg presses and Smith machine squats. I'm gonna try it something new with calves, especially with cues and such and like the stretch you'll see. I wanna get lower on calves and like really get to the bottom of it and milk it and also have full control of it. You can easily have a big ego and stack up a shit ton of weight on calf raises and just kind of bust them out. But I don't want dog shit calves and I don't really care how much weight I'm moving. Every guy that I've seen that's like massive that has big ass calves that always would tell me like what they just do is just hit calves a lot more frequently than any other body part. Yeah. But then it would be low weight, just reps, 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 yeah. reps, reps. Yeah, I bet the recovery with calves is probably off the charts because you're always fucking yeah, walking around and shit. Them. Other than that, I always hear them like, get a full stretch, get all the way to the bottom, just sit at the full stretch and get a good contraction. You see the motherfuckers bouncing out of the yeah, hole and they yeah. never have big calves. We're gonna try that. Hopefully I get big calves from it. We're also training abs too because I wanna bring my abs up. I mean, of course, some people have great ab genetics to begin with and just hitting other movements, they hit abs pretty well already, but we can improve them. As long as we're alive, we can improve, baby. Let's go hit legs. Ooh, I'm, I'm itching. We're gonna warm up to full stack, a couple warm up sets, and then go crazy on this. Yeah, like just every many warm up sets you want, honestly, just to get yourself ready, but not fried for your working set. I usually like to take my first set, 50% of my working weight, do like 10, 12 reps, feel it out, just kind of get used to the movement. And then I like to take a moderate weight the next set, however many reps, four to six, like 75% of what you're working with. And then you can even do like a CNS primer set where you do one to two reps or with your working weight. I've always noticed with the multi set, like I said, after my second and third set, if I'm doing multiple sets, it always felt better than my first set. The first set, when you don't do that, you notice you're a little shakier with your working weight. You kind of got to get used to it. So it kind of like primes you, gets you ready for that working set. But I'm going 285, so I'm gonna take like a 165 and do like 10 beautiful reps, feel it out, make love to the weights. I'm gonna try something new. I guess you could call it an intensity technique. On the last rep, I'm gonna hold the contraction for as long as I can and then lower it as slow as I can. Probably around the same. Uh, I'm like, 
I started doing the that. last rep. Pretty much the lowering of the weights, you're ninety percent stronger than the yeah, positive. Yeah, that's what I heard. Portion. Yeah. You should not just be dropping the weights like you're missing a ton of gains on the table, bro. Lowering is what helps you with your mind muscle connection too. Because if you're yeah. just worrying about it while you're like pulling or whatever, then you're only like working half of your mind muscle connection. Yeah. And then you're well, just dropping then it. You got to feel the right muscles working for the right muscles to work. Yeah. It's not like voodoo magic. But yeah, we're gonna give that a try. I'm gonna do, like I said, like one to two clean reps to get used to the weight, and then we're gonna rock and roll on a on a working set. Try to move the stack for like six to ten reps. legit just held the weight until my legs just started going down. <laughs> that was the rest of my strength when it was going down. That shit crazy. Try that shit out. Leg press now though. I get asked a lot about rest times. Rest times may vary per person depending on your, I guess, cardiovascular training low key because it might take someone double the time to catch their breath after a set of hamstring curls than me. I would say take as much rest as you need to set yourself up for a high quality set. Your next exercise, obviously. You don't want your heart to gas out before your legs if you're doing leg extensions. You feel me? You don't want that to restrict how quality your set is and restrict your progress. Especially if you're doing squats or something. If you feel even your lower back isn't ready yet, but your legs are fully recovered, you should just wait until your lower back is ready. You feel me? Or else you're taken away from your set and your progress. So if you want to constantly be getting PRs, I mean, take the rest you need. One to, I guess, seven minutes if you're a power lifter. Some power lifters be like eating gummy bears and shit in between sets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like when people are like, you have to rest 60 to 120 seconds between sets or it's fucking wrong. You have to. It's like, bro, everyone got different hearts. Like some people got holes in their hearts and they have to rest like an extra minute. Leg presses. Um, I'm pretty warm, but I'm still gonna do a light warm up set and then I'm gonna do a rep with my working weight just to get used to it. But I get pretty warm from hamstring curls, low key, so. <laughs> Locking out on leg movements is okay if you don't have a pre-existing joint disorder and you're using an appropriate load for yourself that you can move with a full range of motion under control without your hands. Every time I see people snapping their knees in those fail videos, they're always shaking, doing fucked half reps with their hands on their legs and then it ends up snapping them because they're working with too much weight that they can't actually handle. Stretch and contract. Don't snap it because that's not good for your joints either. All under control. Capiche? Like I said, I'm experimenting with Smith machine squat specifically because it's not better than the free barbell squat per se, but it's safer, especially for bodybuilding my objective. If I wanted to move the most of weight possible, I would do it fresh at the beginning of the workout, just like any power lifter would, but I'm trying to get the benefits of the squat movement itself, just the multiple recruitment of muscle groups. This has a consistent movement pattern. No matter if your form breaks down, it's gonna go up and down. All you have to focus on is getting your mental cues right in the right positioning, getting loaded 
to the floor, being able to get low to the floor because you got to get in the right positioning with the Smith machine. You can do that with no weights on it, kind of get in your best groove or best positioning, move your feet around, just what best fits you because everybody's built different. But like I said, not better than the free barbell squat, just because there is so many risk factors with the free barbell squat and the stimulus to fatigue on it. It's a fucking bitch and it takes you out the rest of your workout after you do it. So Smith machine it is, it's been feeling good. I'm gonna do like 275 for six to 10 reps. I'm gonna start go. off the plate though. Yeah. All right, gotta move this. back from a little breather from, I guess thigh training, you could call it. We're gonna move into some calves. I don't really like the pressure I get on my lower back from standing calf raise. I like to do it on this like quarter hack machine, whatever you call it, 45 degree super seated leg press. Make sure you get a deep, painful stretch, milk it at the bottom, and then control it on the way up, squeeze it. Don't spend too much time at the top. Just get that squeeze and then control it on the way down. Just make sure you have full muscular control the entire time. Get that full range, don't cheat yourself. right here and you hit that in this one and what I just did you hit this meat is that simple enough mm -mm. you both go mm -mm. get that deep stretch at the bottom squeeze real nice feel it the whole time control all the variables and then just hope and pray it works out you feel me I want to get my abs up. We're gonna do this one. It looks a little goofy, but a lot of people like to do hanging leg raises. I feel like it's not strict enough to really like hammer the abs. Other than the Nautilus crunch, like you know the one where the elbow shits mm -hmm. it's right here and yeah, like the seated one. That one's not here, so we're gonna try this out. You can move this pad so it can get on your lower back because you want your spine to get that full stretch and then you want to crunch down and your spine's moving to crunch your abs down. So you want room and support while you do that. You feel me?
That's a fucking wrap. That's a wrap for the leg day. I'm sipping on my fructose. I threw protein in it. It's kind of like an orange drinks little shake low key. I had to increase the calories because I've been stuck at around 194. It'll be like 0 0.3, 0 0.1 point throughout the week. And my body weight just hasn't moved in like the past nine days on scale on average. So I bumped up the calories a little bit, eating around 3,400 calories now. The weight should start moving again. It, honestly, if your weight isn't going up at all after I'd say a week, week and a half, I use an app called Happy Scale and it does the averages for you when you enter it in. I just enter it in every morning. I'm just able to keep track of my progress pretty much. If I see on average, like I said, after a week that my body weight ain't moving, I know I gotta increase the calories a little bit. So if you're plateauing, don't be afraid to eat more. I normally like to eat pretty much the same things every day, just out of sheer preference because I fucking love the food I eat, frankly. You can pick foods that you think you can stick to pretty consistently just to stick to your calorie goals and or you can switch things out all the time, I mean. A calorie is a fucking calorie. You can lose weight and or gain weight just eating Pop-Tarts. Would you wanna do that? Probably not, cause you feel like shit. You know what I'm saying? It's calories in, calories out. Your body don't give a fuck about where that calorie came from or when or where or what it is. Uh, obviously you'll feel better with better food selection, but if you wanna gain weight, you just gotta eat more, baby. That's how it goes. If you struggle with getting down the calories, I would say just split up your meals into smaller meals. If you're normally trying to eat, eat a big amount of calories and you're eating three meals, try to eat four or five. All right, y'all, post-workout ritual. What what date is Black Friday? 21st. 21st, 30% off everyone's codes across the board. Tons of cool sales, tons of cool stuff dropping. There you guys saw me wearing these shorts. These shorts are dropping, kind of like. He's dropping too. Yeah, those are sick. Tons of cool goodies. So that'll be live on the 21st. Code monkey to save you that 30%. I ain't traveling. We were traveling a lot there. I'm just chilling. We are going to be moving soon. Or I guess, is that soon? I mean, March. Like March like time? Yeah. Springtime. Yeah. But it'll be cool. New gyms, new scenery, new people to meet, new connections. Yeah, it'll be cool, I think. Year round. Yeah, year round. <laughs> year round vitamin D, baby. Here it gets like all cloudy and sad. You just can't be sad if you look out and it's 93 degrees, bro. You just go for a walk and you'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be cool. Drew's dropping merch. There will be a yeah, pre order pre -order link. Will be open. Yeah, it'll I'll be put open. a pre order link in my description for his merch. It's gas. His shirts are cool. Uh, my friend Jordan, my childhood friend that tattoos me, he's the one that helped draw it up, right? Yeah, and he helped then, me design it. So that's pretty cool. But that is going to be a wrap for this week's vlog. I'll see y'all next week. Thank you for all the support. Please slap that like button in the ass for me. Until next time, peace out, baby.